brain freeze. You take a big slurp of a blue raspberry slushy. It tastes like electricity in childhood. Two seconds later, your skull feels like it's detonating from the inside. That's brain freeze, officially called sphenopalatine ganglion neuralgia, which sounds like a spell you'd cast to paralyze someone in a duel. But here's what's actually happening. The cold hits the roof of your mouth, right where a major cluster of blood vessels sits. They constrict fast from the cold, then dilate rapidly once the brain tries to regulate the temperature. That sudden rebound sends a pain signal through the trigeminal nerve, which handles sensation in your head, face, and jaw. But the signal's messy. It's not marked mouth or palate, so your brain just shrugs and says, something's wrong, um, must be the head? That's why pain racks your forehead and sometimes hits your nose, like your nervous system is just throwing darts. It's not dangerous. It's not helpful. But it is very real. A side effect of your body regulating temperature with terrible aim. Blushing. Just the thought of being embarrassed does it. You feel your face go warm. Then the color follows, spreading up your neck and into your cheeks like a silent alarm. That's blushing. And even though it feels like your skin is outing your anxiety, it's actually your nervous system doing what it thinks is helpful. When you feel embarrassed, nervous, or self-conscious, your sympathetic nervous system kicks in. It's the same fight-or-flight system that makes your heart race and your hands sweat. It dilates blood vessels in key areas, like your muscles, to get your body ready for action. But one of the side effects? The blood vessels in your face and neck also widen. More blood plus wider vessels equals more visible redness. And your face just happens to be one of the only places in your body where this reaction is so extreme because it has tons of tiny capillaries just under the skin. Some scientists think blushing may also be a leftover social cue, like your body's way of signaling honesty or remorse without you saying a word. Cool in theory. Not so cool when it happens in the middle of a first date. Muscle cramps. <clears throat> You're lying in bed, half asleep. Then out of nowhere, a sudden stabbing pain in the bottom of your foot. That's a cramp. One moment your muscles are resting. The next, they're clenched in a death grip. What's actually happening? It's usually a chemistry problem. A mix of fatigue, dehydration, or missing electrolytes like magnesium, calcium, or potassium. Those imbalances mess with your motor neurons. Instead of firing smoothly, they go haywire telling the muscle to flex, but not when to stop. Cramps seem to hit hardest at night or during rest, when your nervous system is idling, making it easier for one rogue signal to slip through. Then your foot locks up, and you're instantly wide awake, gripping your toes like you're trying to unsnap a mousetrap. It feels like something's about to tear, but in reality, it just hurts a lot and then it's gone. Your muscles will recover. Your trust in your own body? Maybe not so fast. Side stitch. You're five minutes into a run, cruising along just fine. And then it hits. Sharp pain under your rib cage, like someone jabbed you with a knitting needle. That's a side stitch. And weirdly, it almost never happens during anything else. You don't get one while driving. You don't get one brushing your teeth. So what gives? A side stitch is likely caused by irritation in the lining of your abdominal cavity. Specifically, the parietal peritoneum a thin layer of tissue that supports your organs and hates being yanked around. When your breathing doesn't match your movement, like taking shallow breaths while your stride's pounding away, it tugs on that lining, and that tugging triggers pain. Because it's wired into nerves around your diaphragm and core, it feels like it's stabbing you from the inside. It's not causing any damage, even though it absolutely feels like it might. Just your body's way of saying, hey, maybe coordinate your breathing with your movement next time. Or maybe it's trying to say, Running is dumb. Have you considered pickleball? Yawning. Your dog yawns. You yawn. The person next to you yawns. Then your dog yawns again, like he started it and wants credit. But why do we yawn in the first place? For years, scientists thought it helped increase oxygen levels in your blood, like a deep breath for your brain. But that theory didn't hold up. People yawn just as much when their oxygen levels are fine. The latest theory is that yawning helps cool down your brain. When your brain gets too warm, like when you're tired, bored, or zoning out, it triggers a big gulp of fresh air to help cool the blood headed to your head. It's like popping open a car window for your frontal lobe. Here's the strange part. Yawns are truly contagious. Seeing, hearing, or even reading about a yawn can trigger one. But why? Some scientists think it's a leftover form of social bonding, a way to sync up energy levels or behavior in a group. And if someone doesn't yawn back? That might be a red flag. Research shows that people who don't catch yawns often score lower on empathy. Some studies even suggest that psychopaths and sociopaths are less likely to yawn in response to others. 
So if you yawn and your friend just stares back at you, maybe sleep with one eye open just to be on the safe side. Butterflies in your stomach. You're about to give a speech or walk into an interview or send a risky text and suddenly your stomach feels fluttery like someone shook up a jar of moths and dumped it into your gut. That's not your imagination. Butterflies in your stomach is a real physical response. When you get nervous, your body floods with adrenaline and redirects blood to areas that matter most, like your muscles and brain. Your digestive system is not a priority. Blood flow there drops. Muscles in your gut tighten. And that tension creates the strange, fluttery feeling. You're not actually in danger, but your nervous system doesn't care. It's trying to protect you from prehistoric stress, like being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Not from modern stress, like watching the three-dot typing bubble and panicking about what might appear. Hiccups. You're mid-sentence. Maybe even mid-sip. And suddenly, hic, your diaphragm just glitched. That's the dome-shaped muscle under your lungs that helps you breathe. Normally, it contracts to pull air in and relaxes to let it out. But sometimes it spasms. And when it does, your vocal cords slam shut, making that awkward little hic sound. But why does it happen? No one's 100% sure. Scientists think it's a misfire in your body's reflex loop between your brainstem, vagus nerve, and phrenic nerve. The vagus nerve helps with swallowing and digestion. The phrenic nerve controls your diaphragm, and the brainstem handles automatic functions like breathing. When something irritates that system, like eating too fast, drinking something fizzy, or getting cold too quickly, it can trigger a burst of mixed signals. And if it happens to you a lot, blame a hypersensitive reflex arc. Some people are just wired that way. Most hiccups stop on their own, but not before a friend tells you to hold your breath, drink upside down, or get jump scared by someone in the kitchen. None of those are proven. But hey, at least they're distracting. Pins and needles. <coughs> You've been sitting cross-legged for a while, half listening to a podcast. When you finally try to stand, your foot says, absolutely not, as it lights up with tiny stabbing sparks, buzzing, tingling, impossible to ignore. That's paresthesia, the medical term for abnormal sensations caused by pressure or damage to peripheral nerves. When you compress a nerve by sitting on your leg, leaning on your elbow, or falling asleep in a position you probably shouldn't have, it messes with the way your nerves send signals. Your body's like, oh, we're offline now? Nice. Then, when the pressure lifts and blood flow returns, the nerve fires off a burst of disorganized signals, like it's trying to reestablish contact all at once. That's why you get weird sensations like tingling, burning, numbness, or what can only be described as invisible ants with tiny tasers. To be more specific, your sensory neurons, the ones that report back to the brain, go rogue and start misfiring. Your brain's like, is that touch, pain, temperature, itching? I don't know. Better just make it all hurt. When that pins and needles sensation doesn't go away or keeps coming back, it could be a sign of a nerve problem or a condition like diabetes, or multiple sclerosis. But most of the time, it's just your body's way of telling you to move, shift your weight, or that maybe your legs weren't designed to sit in yoga poses like that. Tinnitus. Everything's quiet, no TV, no phone, no distractions. And then it starts. That high-pitched ringing in your ears that nobody else seems to hear, like your brain just tuned into a secret radio frequency that doesn't exist. That's tinnitus. The perception of sound without any actual external noise. What you're hearing isn't coming from your environment. It's coming from inside your own auditory system. Most often, tinnitus is linked to damage in the hair cells inside your cochlea, the spiral-shaped structure in your inner ear that translates sound vibrations into electrical signals your brain can understand. When those tiny hair cells are damaged, usually from age or noise exposure, the signals they send become weaker or irregular. In response, the brain turns up its sensitivity, trying to compensate for the missing input. In other words, no signal detected. Guess I'll fill in the blanks myself. That ringing, buzzing, or hissing noise is just sound your brain invented to make up for the silence. Sometimes tinnitus is linked to hearing loss, earwax buildup, or even jaw tension. Other times, it just shows up without cause or warning. The worst part? The more you focus on it, the louder it seems to get. Eye twitch. It always shows up uninvited. A little flicker in your eyelid, like your face is trying to send Morse code. It's not painful. It's not serious. It's just extremely annoying. That's an eye twitch, or myokymia, a brief involuntary spasm of the orbicularis oculi, a muscle that surrounds the eye. 
Most of the time it shows up when you're tired, stressed, over-caffeinated, or all three. Eye muscles are controlled by the facial nerve, the same one that lets you blink, smile, and frown. When you're run down, overstimulated, or glued to a screen for too long, the facial nerve gets more reactive and starts firing off tiny bursts of electrical activity, even when it shouldn't. Add in a mild electrolyte imbalance, like low levels of magnesium, potassium, or calcium, and the muscles around your eye become more sensitive, twitching in response to signals that wouldn't normally register. An eye twitch usually goes away on its own, no treatment needed, but if it sticks around for more than a week or spreads to other parts of your face, it could be a sign of something more serious, like a nutritional deficiency or an underlying neurological problem. In most cases, it's just your nerves having a minor meltdown. Nothing personal. Joint popping. You shift your weight. Something in your back goes pop. Or maybe it's your knees when you stand, your neck when you turn. That sudden crack or click that sounds like something just broke. It didn't. That noise is called cavitation. And no, it's not as bad as it sounds. Most of the time it comes from gas bubbles inside the synovial fluid, the lubricant that keeps your joints moving smoothly. When pressure inside the joint changes, those bubbles collapse or shift, and that creates the familiar popping sound. Other times it's from tendons or ligaments moving over bony surfaces. As you move, they stretch slightly, then snap back into place, a harmless mechanical slip that makes more noise than trouble. Sometimes that pop even feels good. Not because anything's gone back into place but because it momentarily reduces joint pressure or stimulates nearby nerves. It's not a fix, but it can reset tension just enough to help you move easier. If there's no pain, swelling, or loss of motion, there's nothing to worry about. But if the popping comes with discomfort or starts to limit your range, it might be time to check what's really going on underneath. Hypnic jerk. <clears throat> your seconds from sleep. That strange in-between place where your thoughts are fuzzy and your limbs go slack and then suddenly your whole body jerks like the ground just dropped out from underneath you. That's a hypnic jerk, also called a sleep start. A sudden, involuntary muscle spasm that happens during the transition from wakefulness to sleep. It feels random, but it's tied to a shift deep in your brain. As your body relaxes and your heart rate slows, your reticular activating system, the part of your brainstem responsible for keeping you awake and alert, begins to shut down. At the same time, your motor control systems are still partially online. The overlap creates a moment of confusion. Your muscles go slack, but your brain hasn't fully signed off yet. It misreads the drop in muscle tone as a sign that something's gone wrong. In response, your brain sends a jolt of neural activity down the spinal cord just to snap everything back online. Some theories suggest it's a primitive reflex left over from evolutionary survival mechanisms, like your brain reacting to muscle relaxation as a signal that you're falling from a tree. Sleep is supposed to be simple. But even as your body powers down, part of your brain keeps watching, just in case. None of these are signs your body's failing. It's just full of messy signals, shortcuts, and ancient wiring that's doing its best to keep up. Is it dumb? Absolutely. But also, kind of brilliant.